dress with an apron, all surrounded by other students wearing the same type of clothes as me, as we share in our excitement and our nerves backstage for our first production of Fiddler on the Roof. I want to laugh or talk to my friends to calm my nerves, but I must stay silent as the mics have already been turned on. All I can do is breathe silently, my heart pounding, and wonder where my parents sit in the crowd behind the curtain that separates the peaceful village of Anishevka from the audience. The next year, I stand in the same hallway backstage in bright 50s passion, surrounded by my stage family, waiting for the energetic swing music to die down so that we can present 2014's first performance of Guys and Dolls. The year after that, I had my first role with a character name as Jill in 2015's Shrek. And in 2018, I landed my first supporting role as Pepper in Annie. In 2019, I had my second supporting role as Gertie in Oklahoma. In 2020, I auditioned for The Wizard of Oz, and I got the part of the Wicked Witch of the West. Now, as many of you know, uh, we couldn't perform this last year due to COVID, so we ended up performing it the last two weeks, including all of the plays that I've been in at Front Range, like It's a Wonderful Life, Ramshackle Inn, and Babbling Brook. Wizard of Oz was my ninth major performance here. However, I have been in several little elementary summer camp performances, and I remember having my first speaking role as an Oompa Loompa in Charlie's Chocolate Factory. I also played a burglar in another, another production, and I was the grandma in Here Fishy Fishy Fishy. I even came back and guest starred as the Red Queen in Alice in Cyberland when I was a camp leader. But of all these performances, big and small, that was far from the first time that I ever set foot on Front Range Christian School's Performing Arts Center stage. I have a memory of my first Grandparents' Day pageant when I was in kindergarten. All of the elementary classes were herded single file into a line leading to the stage right entrance of the PAC. And we were going to shuffle up onto the bleachers and sing our class-specific song and hang out with our grandparents. It was gonna be a good time. I remember in that moment, before I was on stage, only knowing that I was going to come and present my song, and I remember my teachers telling me to smile big I had no idea how stepping through that door backstage was going to change my life. It was all a new sensory experience for me. The low light, the loud music coming from the auditorium, the hushed voices, and the anticipation of discovering whatever was waiting for me out on the stage. I was immediately hooked. Needless to say, acting has been a huge part of not only my front range journey, but also my life as a whole. This made my capstone decision very easy. Charlotte Cushman said, I think I love and reverence all arts equally, only putting my own just above the others, because in it I recognize the union and culmination of my own. To me, it seems as, it seems as if when God conceived the world, that was poetry. He formed it, that was sculpture. He colored it, that was painting. He peopled it with living beings, and that was the grand, divine, eternal drama. Acting is so important because it's a reflection of the world around us. This display of human emotion is the junction between the lives that we live and the imagination that we possess. It's also some of the most fun I've ever had. Acting gives way for unique community and valuable experiences, and it's a creative outlet and a showcase for God-given talent. In short, the good life, for me at least, must have to do with the theater. There is nothing quite like acting. The sensation is unique. <clears throat> On any given performance night, I guarantee you that I will experience most, if not all, of my emotions. Performing is the actor's runner's high. The feeling of completion and fellowship that you get after you perform is unbeatable. Though great, this reward is not easy to achieve. It's very difficult and time-consuming to build a production, and it can be comparable to learning how to walk. This is because the cast and the crew <clears throat> build a production from the ground up, and it's like moving it from a place from immobility to running in leaps and bounds. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a vocal condition that's flaring up. <clears throat> I would like to take a minute to appreciate all of the people that have encouraged me in creating these productions, specifically my parents, because they have given me countless opportunities to not only be a part of this community, but also uh, they have encouraged me when the going gets rough. It's in these rough moments when my directors, peers, family members, and teachers all surround me with grace and encouragement and I'm very thankful for their presence in my life. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, 
that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. With the promise of a grand show comes also the promise of challenge and trial, as well as the dedication to create. I believe that God created us to create because we were made in the image of him, our creator. To materialize characters, places, interactions, lessons, and stories is to be a reflection of God's creative image. I learned this year that the theater and its alias community are gifts from God. First, I want to talk about <clears throat> joy and friendship. Uh, when I began Capstone this year, I knew that I wanted to talk about joy in the stage, but after some very informative experiences in the first semester, I was still at a loss as to how joy related to the theater. In an interview with the very wise and talented Kurt Munsterman of the Valor Theater Arts Department, I began to realize this answer to my question, which was friendship. Mr. Munsterman sparked this idea of the interconnectedness of joy and friendship in acting when he said, friendship has to come before a lecture and friendship has to be the most important element that you have as a Christian with someone else. This made me think of not only the mission field within theater that the Christian has, but also the reason that we experience joy when we act. This is because theater was designed by God for fellowship and fellowship is simply the easiest way to glean the fullest experience in the field. After I began to talk with Mr. Munsterman, I started this, uh, these classes for actors and models with a company that agreed to represent me after I was done with the training. The first time I went, I absolutely resented it. <laughs> I hated it. I felt judged and compared to everybody else in this disparaging awkwardness, and it was horrible. But thinking back, I think I can sum it all up by saying that I simply felt alone. The second time that I went, something unexpected happened. <clears throat> I actually enjoyed myself, or at least I didn't hate it as much. Each time I went, I enjoyed it a little bit more because I began to meet people and to become friends with the instructors. Even though I wasn't completely comfortable, I began to push my boundaries and I found myself singing and laughing and acting with these people that I couldn't stand just weeks before. We took pictures and we danced together and we played games. The joy that I was feeling was natural and it wasn't just because I was doing what I loved, it was because I was experiencing friendship. I also witnessed this strong friendship when I visited Baylor University a couple weeks ago. As the tour came to a close, I still had this lingering curiosity about the theater building. And so my mom and I went and looked around and we discovered that it was locked from the outside. This did not stop God from showing me what I needed to see. A student was entering the building while we were there and she ended up talking to us and giving us a tour and introducing us to some very important people. The sense of friendship and community that I got when I stepped into that building was so strong and everyone was so joyful in their place in the theater department. Joy has to be a part of the good life, and you cannot experience joy without friendship. <clears throat> in the many years that I've been acting, I find that acting also strengthens friendships. We have this gathering at Front Range called Circle Time before each performance, and it's one of the best examples of community in the theater that I could get. We warm up our voices, and we do tongue twisters, and we go over little improvements so that maybe our performance tonight will be a little bit better than the one it was last night. <clears throat> We encourage each other and we pray for each other and we take partake in traditions just like this. Now, there's oh, there is a <laughs> shout out to Nick. <laughs> now, I think we can stop with that pretty good. Basically, we're all in our little circle, and if you can't tell what we're saying, we're yelling, I'm fired up, you fired up, yeah. And it starts with one person in a whisper, and it ends up going all the way around the circle till we're all yelling and screaming and jumping, and we are um, just experiencing relationship with each other, strengthening it before we go on stage. Communities are built on experiences and traditions like these. Acting is a community, and it's a vessel for friendship and joy. Now next I want to talk about something a little more analytical, and that is theater as a microcosm for the messianic message. <clears throat> I read this book this year called Acting in Faith by Michael Carey, and it changed the way I look at the theater and uh, also my relationship with God on and off the stage. My biggest takeaway was a chapter called Parallels, Parallels Between Christianity and Theater, that is. 
It presented theater as a microcosm for the Holy Trinity, and it changed the lens through which I will always look at acting. It, Carrie presented God the Father as a parallel to the playwright. The playwright is the author of the work, and the playwright writes the story, and they create everything in that world, and they know their characters inside and out. Just as the playwright does all of those things, God created and spoke us into existence, and everything else as well, and he has a plan for us, and knows us even before we are born. Next, Carrie parallels the director to the son. The director has the difficult task of aligning the wishes of the playwright to the talents of the actors. And they do this by relating the actors, relating to the actors with a servant's heart. Jesus has the difficult task of forming the character of the people on earth to the wishes of God. And that is extremely difficult. And he did this by humbling himself through the incarnation. The last parallel was the Holy Spirit and the stage manager. Now the stage manager is the voice between the director and the people. That medium that serves as the Holy Spirit for us in Christianity, and they are also invisible to most. Now this was extremely influential because it actually changes the precedence that comes with acting. Because usually acting is accepted as secular and therefore difficult for Christians to partake in. But after reading about this microcosm, I strongly disagree with that perspective. I believe that acting is designed as a community that mirrors the kingdom of God, and therefore it was created for the Christian to partake in, as a vessel to glorify him and to display the fellowship and love that we have for others. Now next I wanna talk about empathy in the theater. Empathy establishes friendship, which is essential for the good life, as we already know. And empathy uh, is, it's everywhere in acting, actually. In that interview that I had with Mr. Munsterman, um, I started to sort of realize the importance of empathy uh, when I realized the importance of joy and friendship. Um, I knew that it was important, but I didn't know how crucial it was. Um, there's actually an entire chapter in empathy, um, on empathy and acting in faith, the book that I read. Um, and upon like stumbling across this chapter and beginning it, I was like, of course we need empathy. Like, How am I supposed to make anyone else believe that I am someone else without empathy? And that was the right concept, but I wasn't thinking about it deep enough. Empathy is multidimensional when it comes to the theater. Performance, in order to be good, must appeal not only to the character, but also to the audience. When you portray a character, you must appeal to their emotions and their circumstances, but you also have an obligation to the audience. You must keep them immersed in the story that the playwright has designed for them. If you're too immersed in your own character, your performance is not going to be anything more than subpar. And the empathy that the actor needs in his work is very similar to the empathy that the Christian needs in his field. It's easy to become immersed in one's own character on and off the stage. Christians often become wrapped up in their own beliefs, stigmatisms, experiences, and they forget to empathize with others. Acting, when exercised in a dimensional way, teaches empathy as second nature. And that's why it's so important. Now, it won't always teach everyone. And that's just the way it goes. But the practice of acting is the practice of empathy, which fosters community. It's an important form of self-expression that not only teaches us how to express ourselves, but also to, also to empathize with others. In conclusion, I learned how to be a Christian actor this year. Joy and friendship work hand in hand to create an empathetic microcosm that shows God's word in a human display of talents that he gives us. This human display is community. Joy and friendship are intertwined, and they are crucial to experience goodness. The stage is designed as a gift, not a secular struggle. Empathy is taught when we act, and it's crucial to form community. After my capstone experience and my experience in the theater at FRCS, I hope to never leave the theater behind. I hope next year to study acting at Baylor University in the fall to continue living in the joy, friendship, and empathy that cultivate the community that the Lord has set out for me. Thank you.